I think it's very important to be on the cutting edge of what God is doing before it becomes common knowledge to everyone else. Now, I've been telling people that, that I was closely acquainted with that they need to do stuff on social media in whatever capacity because you don't ever want to limit yourself in your ability to reach people because we need to have the spirit of evangelism over our lives. Now, in a time of this uh, crisis where everything is shut down, we see people now starting to adopt the things that we've been telling them that they needed to do. And sometimes when you're put in a position where you've got to do these things, you'd be amazed at what you can do. But it's better to be on the cutting edge because you can make a lot of headway when you understand what God is doing at a time, in a place, in a season. And many of the things that God has told us was in preparation for this time. Now, we can't speak for a time in the future, but we know at this present time, everything that God has given us has been relevant for this season. Now, I want to take the time to let every one of you know something, and I'm going to be candid with you concerning this. When Brenda and I left Dallas, we came here with an assignment to reach a region in an area. And everything that Brenda and I do is reflected in how in the things that we say in our videos, the way we preach our conversation when we talk to people. It's about activating an area, more so than just a local body of believers. So it's not our attempts, per se, to bash anybody that's confined to a local church. That's not it at all. When you deal with everything from a kingdom perspective, you understand that the kingdom is bigger than your local assembly. That's just the way it is. That's just the bottom line. We have to be honest with this thing in order for people to be transformed. This is the thing you got to take into consideration. With the way things was before this coronavirus, I mean, took shape, there was very little transformation in the immediate areas of where a lot of churches are. I want you to hear me clearly. This is not bashing. This is just a reality. If there's a church on every corner, that corner should be transformed. If there's a multitude of churches in a city, that city should be transformed. Because God told me years ago when we were still in Dallas that, there's enough, that he has enough people in every city. And this was in context to, to the United States at this time. And I dare to believe that this could be in other places too. That, there's enough, that he has enough people in every city or town to transform it. But that, that, that has not happened. Why is that? Because we've been more confined I mean, I mean, to a place rather than understanding that we have brothers and sisters beyond the local assembly. Now, this is the thing. Many times when Brenda and I talk and we speak things, we always run the risk of offending people. Because a lot of people have a mentality, and when we say the stuff, it rubs people the wrong way. As a matter of fact, I've had people contact me and told and, 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 and let me know that they would much rather us not much rather for them not to receive some of the things that that we put out there over the years. But this is the thing you got to take into consideration. We have to make a choice whether we're going to offend people or God. It's not our intention to deliberately offend people because if you don't know anything about, about this man of God, I'm very laid back. But when it comes to the, to the things of God, I have to make a decision every day whether I'm going to offend, offend people or I'm going to offend God. If I have a choice between offending people and God, guess what? The people lose because I have to stand before the Lord and give an account for everything that I say. And I want to make sure that whenever I'm saying something that is under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, that I have the pleasure of the Lord. And this is the other thing. I know that when I do what God tells me to do, he's going to confirm his word. That's very important. And we're going to tie this together to something that we've talked about before, but from a different perspective. Now, I'm going to ask you a question. And it may sound natural, but it's not. Have you taken your medicine today? Have you taken your dose of medicine today? Now, now, that can be taken in many contexts. I'm going to talk about it from a different perspective today. Years ago when I worked at, um, at, a, at a retail store, Fry's Electronics, 
in Plano back in the day, um, back some years ago, I had a department manager, I'm not going to mention his name, and he had a very abrasive attitude. So much so that, that when that every once in a while I come up to him and ask him, "Have you taken your medicine?" Now you now if you now for those of you who understand, I'm talking about for somebody that's mentally disturbed. <laughs> I ask him if, he, if they take the medicine. If he had not taken his medicine, then I knew not to ask him certain things, because I knew what type of response I was going to get. I did it jokingly, but I, there was a part of that I was serious because he acted like that. All right, so I said all that to say this. When I say, did you take your medicine? We're going to talk about the scripture from a different perspective. And we're going to tie this together to something that I believe will bless somebody that's listening right now. Isaiah 58. Now, we've gone here before. Isaiah 58 and verse... Oh, let, 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 I'll start with verse... I'll, I'll start with verse number... Uh, hallelujah. Verse number 3. It says, Wherefore have we fasted, say they, and thou seest not? Wherefore, we have afflicted our soul, and thou takest no knowledge. Behold, in the day of your fast you find pleasure and exact all your labors. Behold, you fast for strife and debate. Now this is all wrong in the I mean, motivation. And to smite with the fist of wickedness, which goes on today. Ye shall not fast as you do this day, to make your, fa your voice to be heard on high. Is it such a fast that I have chosen, a day for a man to afflict his soul? Is it to bow down his head as a bulrush and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Would thou call this a fast, an acceptable day to the Lord? Is not this fast that I have chosen to loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free, and that you break every yoke? Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry, and that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house? When thou seest the naked, that thou cover him, and that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh. Watch this. This is important. This is where we're going to, going to do a jumping off point. Then shall thy light break forth as the morning, and thine health shall spring forth speedily, and thy righteousness shall go before thee, and the glory of the Lord shall be thy real reward. Now let's deal with the beginning part of verse number 8 again. It reads as such, Then shall thy light break forth as the morning, and thine health shall spring forth speedily. I think that's important to understand. The Lord had dealt with me going back a few months ago, before this outbreak, that fasting was his way of healing. And, and I understood in the context of divine healing, the walking in divine healing. And when you live a lifestyle of fasting, you produce some very powerful benefits. In addition to the obvious things, getting direction from God, being more sensitive to the things of God, being able to properly appropriate power in the realm of the spirit, which there needs to be more talking on fasting because in a lot of churches, they don't encourage it at all. If they do that, they talk about some mess like the Daniel fast where you, you fast from, from different things, but that doesn't do anything spiritually. I mean, I, I don't know too many people who do the Daniel fast that have any real power when it comes to casting out demonic spirits. Maybe you can share that with me. Maybe you can help me with that. Maybe you know somebody that does that. I have not seen that. All right. So, like I said, I can only deal with things from my point of reference. So, we're not here to debate that all, all of that stuff, but I have not seen that. So, with that said, let, let, let's tie this together to what we're talking about right here. When the Lord started to deal with me on that, this was in regards to him, first and foremost, dealing with somebody that we had prayed for, and they did not get healed. Yes, that does happen. We prayed for somebody, and they did not get healed. Then he told me that they needed to do a better job of taking care of themselves, which, which helped me to understand that God had probably been, been dealing with them concerning that. I mean, I, I have to believe that. And then he told me he was going to require a greater level of responsibility to his ministers for them to be, to be healed. And maybe that's why you could explain a lot of the ministers now that have died from the coronavirus. Because, again, a lot of times, and, and I see this here locally, I mean, people, people look like um, houses. They, they, look, they, they look like they could go on a, on a serious diet and stuff. So... And th this is not to be bashing, but this is a, let's let's be honest with this. Stuff. We have to be honest 
that people are going to be delivered because I had to deal with myself. God told me that I ate too much. Now, if anybody of you saw some of our videos going back a few years, you discovered I was a few pounds heavier back in those days. And God had to tell me that he put me on a six-hour feeding window, not realizing that he was protecting me from what was happening right now. Now, a lot of the people that have been sick with the coronavirus, they tell you to avoid, I mean, those that have what they call underlying conditions, those are people that have had issues with health in the past, either with high blood pressure, heart attacks, um, diabetes, underlying conditions would make a person more susceptible. Now, God delivered me from a major heart attack in 2011. And then I had some issues back in 2015 where I had been out in the cold and, and I had some stuff build up in me. But the major issue was 2011, where God had, God had, had brought me back miraculously. The doctors had given up on me. And some people prayed for me, some powerful people prayed for me. God brought me back and within 24 hours, God started healing my heart. The doctors was amazed. But according to the medical profession, I would, I mean, if I listened to them, I'm going to say it like this. If I had listened to them, I would have been considered one who had an underlying condition. But the devil is a lie. I, I refuse to receive that. Now, that's for me. I can't speak that for you because I'm not worried about any backlash lash behind this video. Because, again, you're going to do whatever you need to do. I tell you to obey the Holy Ghost. This is the reason why we need the Holy Ghost, because God will tell us what we can do. Based upon medical science, I mean... They would try to put me in that category, but I refuse to receive it. God told me this in regards to the coronavirus. He said, just simply walk in the spirit. Now, now not realizing that when he had me on uh, this six-hour feeding window, which Brenda and I practice quite rigorously. I mean, we, we, we have some leeway every once in a while where we may do an eight-hour feeding window, but more, but, but for me primarily, I try to stay to a six-hour feeding window. And not realizing that with the science... <laughs> Of fasting, we realize that any time you go beyond 14 hours of fasting, it brings your body, it reduces your insulin resistance, and it brings your body down where you're less susceptible to disease. Your body becomes built up because those that have insulin resistance, they put themselves in a position where, where a lot of the nutrients, including sugar and stuff like that, cannot get into the cells. So if they don't get into the cells, they stay into the blood which makes them open for a, lot, for a lot of this stuff, for a lot of diseases and stuff. So anywhere from 14 hours to up to 24 hours during this time, from what we've researched, those are the best types of fast that you can do within that time where you can, where you can stay healed and you can stay delivered because your body your body's built up. And you also get the, the, the double whammy. You also make yourself more open to the sensitive things of God. You, you can hear from God and, you know, you can properly appropriate the power that you need to deal with the type of demonic activity that you're going to have to encounter. I think that's very important to understand. It's a win-win situation. A lot of people won't tackle the scripture from this standpoint because they think that is not spiritual. Your, your temple has to be maintained in order for you to do the work of the Lord. And that's why you can see a lot of ministers who have underlying conditions falling prey to this because, again, they have not taken the time to, to, to understand that fasting is not a dirty word. It's something that God wants to use in order to cleanse us. And now, now the enemy, now, for those that are on medication, I want you to pray about this. This is why you need the Holy Ghost, to be able to help you properly discern what you need to do. There's people that are on medication right now that one of the stipulations for you staying on the medication and it's supposedly working for you, is that you have to eat something with the medication. Does everybody understand that? And a lot of people are put in a place of bondage because they have to eat something and they cannot fast because the doctor tells them that they have to eat something with this medicine. Now, we now this is not to bash doctors, but we have to be real. There's a lot of good doctors out there, a lot of good doctors out there. But when you deal with medication, a lot of that medication produces side effects. And... And in many cases, you're injecting poison into your body that your body was not designed to be able to deal with. I want you to understand that this is, what, this is why you have to, I mean, deal with the great physician along with, with, with the other physicians. And during this particular time, there's lots of people 
that cannot even go to the doctor right now because of the coronavirus. They cannot go. So they have to trust God on a different level. It has to be an extreme a case of emergency for people to even go there. So you have to understand that when you take this medication, it, it robs you of the opportunity for your body to be able to operate the way God created it to. Your body was created to actually heal itself and to rejuvenate itself because the longer you go in a state of fasting, after you go between 14 hours, going into the 17, 18 hours, your body goes through a state of autophagy, which means it eliminates bad cells, toxic cells, I mean, disease cells out of your body once you get into that realm and you do that on a consistent basis. It's like a detoxing. It gets rid of the bad cells and, and it brings you into a place of rejuvenation. This is powerful. And then when you go up into a realm of 24 hours, your body starts to develop stem cells and stem cells, reproducing stem cells and, re and, and replacing the old cells that are lost or damaged. That's powerful. You need to understand it. This was something that God set up from the beginning of time in order for the body to be rejuvenated. So when we do this as a lifestyle, this is a, this is a means of, of, of your body being rejuvenated on a different level. And of course, you need to eat right concerning this too. But, at the, but the point is, the process was already I mean, I mean, put into place when the body was created centuries ago to operate in those situations. So you see many people that are, that are dealing with this, because I didn't know this until just recently, but you see many of the people, particularly in the church world, that are dealing with, with these types of sicknesses and stuff like that, who are supposed to be under the covenant of God, they're in a position where they're having to fight these things, and, and some people have died from these things because they have not understood the memo from heaven. God told us this back at the time of this video. God told us this back there. I mean, this is this is April, right? This is April. This is April. Okay, April. God told us back in October to start doing these things. Before this thing became what it was today, God prepared us and built us up. Now, mind you, like I said, according to medical science, I mean, if I received them, they would have, they would have classified me as one of those with an underlying condition. But the devil is a lie. I refuse to accept that. I choose to believe what the Holy Ghost told me. So when we fast, we fast as a, as a way of developing spiritual intimacy, a way of hearing from God, a way of being prepared against demonic attacks because there's people of other religions that fast, but Christians argue about that. But it's also a way to spring forth health. Now, we, we learn how to do these things as a lifestyle and stop arguing about it because, again, we need to understand that God ha has an overall benefit. God is not trying to deny us of the privilege to eat food. He's not. He's giving us an opportunity so we can have abundant life in a very powerful way. Does everybody understand me? Equal about Sunday. And it does not matter whether you're skinny, you still need to fast. That's just the bottom line because it's a way of rejuvenating your body. Rejuvenating your body. Hear me clearly. It's, it's something that God set up. I mean, that's medicine that you can take. So, so, for, for, so, so if somebody's taking the medicine, I say, are you taking your medicine today? I may ask you the question, have you taken your medicine this week? That's what I'll be talking about. Have you been? Have you fasted some time this week in order to be cleansed? Because it's a win-win situation, beloved. It's a win-win situation. It's a way to rejuvenate yourself. So we want to light a fire under you today. Hallelujah. And many times you have to resist the temptation for going back to another way. And this is the thing. Say you do that a couple times a week. That's fine. But for some of, the, some of us that have to do this, I mean, with divine instruction, I think it's important to note that when God gives us an instruction, he's doing it out of love for us. Understanding our place, understanding our assignment, understanding what God has for us in our future in order to do. He puts us on a plan in order to make it possible for us to be able to facilitate his purpose for us in this three-dimensional world. Now, I dare tell each and every one of you right now, those of you, you need to fast more so than not. But whether you do that, whether you do what Apostle Young tells you, that's your affair. I, I cannot play the role of God in your life. 
I cannot play that role. The only thing I can do is give you some suggestions based upon what God has showed me and my wife. Hallelujah. So what you do with it, something out of this will bless you today. So take your, take your medicine during the week. Take your dose of fasting and prayer before the Lord. And when you, and when you do the word, remember when, when you fast, you're doing the word actually. You're operating according to Isaiah 58 and 8. So you're actually applying the principles to the word for your healing as well as any other scriptures like Romans 8 and 11, like, like Exodus 15, 26. All of, all of these scriptures, you speak those words. Keep on speaking them. Keep on speaking those words. But apply other aspects of the word as well. We pray God, how oh, glory. Thank you, Lord. And for those of you that need the grace and ability to fast on a different level, we want to pray for you that you'll have some self-control. Because one of the things, and, and one of the things we need to understand that it takes discipline and self-control, which you do have according to scripture. If a Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23 are correct, then we have the ability, we have the fruit of the Spirit, which is called temperance. We have the ability to be able to have some self-control and to be able to be disciplined to do these things. You have the ability to do those things by inheritance, but you have to yield yourself to the Spirit, beloved. You, you have to be different. He cried by Sunday. I'm a work in progress. Hallelujah. And I have to apply the same principles of the word that you do in order to walk in the things of God. Many people can, can be protected and healed from, I mean, from, from sicknesses and disease, arthritis and different things, if they just learn how to practice and understand, do your, I mean, do, do your due diligence and understand more you can about the fasting that will help you. Not the stuff, that, I mean, not this guilty stuff that, I mean, stopping yourself from, from, I mean, from watching TV. You need to do that anyway, as a, as a part of giving, give, giving devotion to the Lord. But that's not going to affect your physical body. That's not going to do. It may eliminate some stress. Yeah, I, I stand corrected. It may eliminate some stress because if you turn off the news, you won't be hearing all of that mess. But for those of you that like to process down, so to speak, unwind, so to speak, which everybody need to do from time to time, I get that. But if you spend more time winding down than you do getting before the Lord, you you got the wrong spirit. That's just the way it is. We have to be honest with that. As long as you can take your time before the Lord and get everything you need from the Lord, there is no debate. Like I said, you could like I said, you could do what you want in your own house. I'm not your God. But the bottom line is, is that for those of you that need to hear from God right now, and and and, and a lot of time you have free now, you have no excuse. You can. You can know the voice of God for yourself. You can hear God for yourself. You can grow in the gifts of the Spirit. You can do a lot of things during this particular space and time that you didn't have time for, I mean, at the beginning. You can have a deeper hold on God than you ever had. Because there's lots of people that go to church every Sunday and don't even know God. They go to church faithfully, I mean, and don't know God. This is your opportunity today to be able to know more about God. But we've taken the time with this scripture. We pray God's blessing over you. If you do not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, we're going to give you an opportunity right now. Hallelujah. If you do not know Jesus Christ and the pardon of your sins, we're going to use this opportunity to, to give you the plan of salvation. And we need to accept him because as these things escalate in the world, there's one thing constant. That's Jesus Christ the power of the Holy Ghost, God the Father. He, he, he never changes. He's still there. And those of you that are connected to God, you're connected to a different kingdom. The, the kingdom of this world change, but the kingdom of God never changes. So if you do not know Jesus Christ and the pardon of your sins, or if you are backslidden, we're going to give you an opportunity to accept him right now. Repeat with me, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. And save me. Forgive me. Wash away my sins. And make me a child of God. From this day forward. I promise to serve you. For the rest of my life. And as I'm here right now. I say that I am saved. I am born again. 
My old life is over and I start my new life right now. And Father, I thank you for sending your son Jesus to die on the cross for me. Thank you for sending the gift of your son to die on the cross for me. And I am redeemed by his blood that was shed for me. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen and amen. If you've accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, congratulations. This is a new beginning for you. It's important that whenever we reach out, we want to make sure we want, we want you to know Jesus Christ above everything else like that. And for those of you that are born again and need to grow in the things of God, we want to encourage you as well. We love you. We pray God's blessing over you. Take your medicine. So the next time you go up to somebody, you can take it from a different twist. Ask them, have you taken your medicine? All right. <laughs> Talk to you later. This is Apostle Young. We will be sharing some more things with you as God gives us the grace and opportunity. Have a blessed day in the Holy Ghost. Talk to you soon.